What is up everyone and we are back with another guide about new worlds. Today we're going to be talking about the best faction token farm for those of you who are at level 35 and above. Yes, this farm can be considered end game token farming depending on a few factors. If you watched my previous faction token farm video, that video is mainly for those of you who are level 10 to level 30. But as you get higher leveled, you can access harder areas. You can also gain access to better faction token farming because it scales with the area. So if you want to learn the best faction token farm for level 35 and above, even endgame, keep on watching. But before we get into that, my name is Kazox and I created this channel so I can donate a portion of revenue gained to nonprofit organizations that help out disabled veterans such as myself and by watching your contributing so I thank each and every one of you. With that out of the way let's get into it. I know a lot of you have seen other faction token farm videos at Great Cleave or Shattered Mountain but this mid tier token farm absolutely destroys these farms and for good reason. It is because it's a capturable territory and that location is Restless Shores. And these are the three main reasons why. First off, there are no corrupted portals that spawn in the PvP missions that we are going to be discussing. And you will never be interrupted by these portals or monoliths unlike the other territories. Number two is in order to gain fashion tokens quickly, we are going to be doing the PvP missions. And these PvP missions are extremely close to town, making your runs quick. Unlike zones like Morningdale that have a 1,700 meter distance between the mission and the town. And number 3, since it is a territory you can raise your territory standing in order to boost your token gains. Yes, this is the only time I would recommend picking up territory standing cards that boost up your token gains. Fashion token gain cards are unlocked at territory standing level 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 30, 32, 34, and so forth. What this means that every two levels starting at level 12, you're gonna have a chance to boost your token gains. I would also recommend you pick standing gain unless token gain is an option, because the faster you gain standing, the faster you will unlock more fashion token boosts. But there are diminishing returns every time you get the card, and all percent cards reduce the same amount. And here is the list that it recorded so far. So as you can see, the more time you pick the same exact card, you get less and less. But our main focus here is to maximize our token gain, so it's always highly recommended to pick more fashion tokens and then standing gain when possible. And this territory boost is the main reason why this farm can be considered endgame, because you can boost it further than Shattered Mountain or Great Cleave. If you pick boost fashion tokens gain every time, you can gain more tokens than Shattered Mountain at territory standing level 14 or by picking up boost fashion tokens gained 3 times. And if you pick it only 2 times, you gain roughly the same amount of tokens as Shattered Mountain. All of this in a level 41 through 46 zone and that is much easier than the level 60 plus zone. While it may take you a long time to get higher level territory, it will be worth it if you constantly token farm in this exact area and if you are looking for a mid tier to end game token farm. For PvP missions, they are always exactly the same except there are different variations depending on your location. Gather intel, stay here for 1 minute 30 seconds and kill some enemies. I know different factions have different goals so I can't cover them all. However, here is really the only downside to this farm. And that is if you are a Syndicate faction member. Syndicate has a PvP mission to kill 5 crocodiles but only 4 spawn so you have to gather intel first because it is close. And then you run to the shore to kill 4 alligators or crocodiles. Then gather the intel and wait for 1 minute and 30 seconds to finish the next mission. Finally you have to run to the shore and kill your 5th alligator. And if anyone else is farming this or someone randomly kills a crocodile then your run time will drastically increase. And because of this, there is an option to skip this mission and just gather intel, run to the other intel, and by the time you gather both of them, there will be around a 20 seconds left in your mission so you can just farm iron ore in the location and run back. This is a downside, however, running 2 out of 3 PvP missions may eat the same amount of tokens per second if you musket dodge roll. I use musket dodge roll because it has a 3 second haste with hustle compared to the bow's 2 second haste. To enable dodge roll, you need to be in lightweight armor. You can also boost your runtime even further with jewelry. 
The first one is Arrow Kriti that boosts your haste time by 10% or more. For some reason this doesn't work all the time, but it boosts mine from 3 seconds to 4 seconds. I believe there is a cooldown for this perk, so if you dodge roll multiple times in a row, the first haste will be 4 seconds and the second one will be 3 seconds. Then get a ring with Hardy to boost your maximum stamina. This percentage doesn't matter much because you just need one more stamina so you don't reach that zero stamina when you dodge roll twice in a row. If you reach zero stamina, you can no longer dodge roll until your stamina gets to max, making your runtime much slower. Finally, the earring piece. That can give you nimble that increases your stamina regeneration. This will help marginally but helps everything tie together. With all three of these, your haste is longer, your stamina is higher, and you regenerate stamina faster. This trifecta allows you to keep your haste up all the time. As you get more territory standing in Restless Shores for you Syndicate members, it will be more worth it to run all three PvP missions to get more tokens per second. However, like I said, if somebody kills a crocodile while you are doing other PvP missions, your runtime will drastically increase. With the other two fashions, you're going to have a good time running this as the token boost and running with musket dodge will absolutely destroys Shattered Mountain's fashion token farm. This is a mid-tier zone and on average you will get around 32,000 tokens every hour and that is not even including the fashion token buffs. If you do pick up the fashion token buffs, you only need to pick it 3 times and your farm will be much faster and easier than Shattered Mountain. Unfortunately for those syndicate members like myself, it is around 25,000 tokens per hour with no faction token buffs. However, it is still recommended to use this because most players are not level 60 and they can't do Shattered Mountain frequently unless you're with a party. With all of that being said, if you are a solo player, it is highly recommended to do this farm in the early morning when nobody else is online so you can farm this uninterrupted by other factions and reap the benefits. As you can see here, the jewelry trifecta can also help you dodge roll 3 times in a row, enabling you to outrun anyone, even a great axe user, dramatically increasing your survivability. What I like to do with my tokens is buy runes in order to create bags and storage chests and then sell them on the market for some profit. And that's pretty much it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing as it helps me reach a greater audience and helps me donate even more to disabled veterans. Thank you all for tuning in and listening and until next time.